For years, I've been known as a person that invests in people and small businesses. I do it on television with The Profit, and now I'm doing it right here on this podcast. I'm Marcus Slimonis, and every week I'll introduce you to innovative businesses that are looking to expand and improve. We'll find out about their biggest struggles and what's holding them back. I'll provide some feedback, some real-world coaching, and then create a blueprint for their future. Look, sometimes deals are going to happen, and sometimes they're not. You never know who's going to show up or what you're going to hear. This is 100%. So take yourself back to the summer of 1989. I don't know what you were doing, but I was taking a summer school class called Driver's Ed. I was 16. I had driven cars since I was probably 12. But I took this class and I slipped the instructor a couple hundred bucks and I got my license. So if you could just imagine being with somebody who has ADD, who likes to multitask, who got his license by paying somebody off, and now you enter a very serious zone. My next guest knows all too well about the dangers of distracted driving. On a sunny morning in 2015, he had bicycled into an intersection right here in Manhattan just as a driver ran a red light while looking at his phone. He was thrown over the handlebars right onto the pavement. He fractured his hip, his elbow, and he was in the hospital for weeks. While rehabilitating, he started to wonder what he could do to stop this from happening again. He developed an app called This App Saves Lives. Not only does it keep drivers from using electronic devices while behind the wheel, but more importantly, it actually rewards them for keeping their eyes on the road. Hi, Ryan. How are you? Hey, Marcus. I'm doing really well. I did want to spend some time with you really understanding exactly what the product is, how it works, but most importantly, your story of why you started it. So this app saves lives. It's an app that rewards drivers who choose not to engage in distracted driving. In an instant, you could kill someone. And so it's a product very much rooted in behavioral psychology, which finds that you elicit the most amount of positive change when you reward individuals for making the right choice, as opposed to punishing them for doing the wrong. So the app automatically runs each time you get behind the wheel and drive and issues you reward points based upon the time that you spend driving undistracted. And you can visit our rewards portal where we've got all sorts of incentives that are sponsored by national brands like Shake Shack and Urban Outfitters and Zombia Cookies, as well as your favorite local brick and mortar companies. Now, this idea of knowing that it's not right to text while driving is obvious to me. But if it's so obvious, why do you think people still do it? But if you ask everyone, are you an above average driver? Most people think they're above average. Most people think they can do something, get away with it. There are no repercussions. But what the data shows is that that's not the case. This is a habit that results in 2 million accidents every single year, half a million injuries, 4,000 deaths. And that's just in the US alone. And so if everyone was above average, none of those statistics would even exist. Now, can you tell us a little bit about what your background is? Because you didn't just randomly make this product, correct? Yeah, I started my career as an investor. And I spent the first four or five years of my life investing in entrepreneurs around the country. I worked for Goldman Sachs and, you know, say what you want to say about the evil monster that is Goldman. It was a phenomenally rewarding experience for me to sit in front of the entrepreneurs to understand how we could add value beyond the firm's capital. And I did that long enough to know that I wanted to be on the other side of the table. I wanted to be the entrepreneur. And so I was very fortunate to be able to meet with so many diverse individuals from all over the world. And I was able to travel with them. I got very, very ill in China and was unable to communicate with the pharmacist due to the language barrier. I love to travel. I love cultural immersion. I love the experience that is, you know, connecting with individuals from all walks of life and all cultures. And I felt like that language barrier was an impediment to me being able to do just that. And so my friend and I started a company called Verbalize It, which was a language translation company. We took it on the TV show Dark Tank. Next up is Brian Frankel and Kunal Sarda with a business to help global communication. We want to work with you to put Verbalize It in the hands of individuals and businesses around the world. So who's ready to make a deal? Boo. We felt like that was a good opportunity to at least surround ourselves with potential investors. And did you get an investment? 
we got three offers on the show. So what I'm willing to do is $250,000 for 25%. I'll give you $250,000 for 20%. I'll do two hundred fifty dollars for 25%. What are you going to do? We accepted one on air from Kevin O'Leary. Mr. Wonderful, you have a deal. Oh. Wow. Whoa. Whoa. Surprise. Looking forward to working with you guys. Likewise. Wow. Very interesting. Thanks a lot. But we ended up in the aftermath of the actual live episode deciding not to move forward with the investment, and we ended up raising capital from a different group of investors. I like the fact that Shark Tank shines a light on entrepreneurship. What I don't like about it is that I don't know if the deal happens, I don't know if it doesn't happen, and it creates this illusion that business is fun and it's a game. But it's not a game. But I'm grateful that Shark Tank exists because it gave the profit an opportunity to live. It was a very interesting and unique experience, I'll say that. For many of you that have this desire to be entrepreneurs and this desire to start your own business and this desire to be your own boss, it's really important that you pay attention to people like Ryan, whether they're in China and they can't communicate or whether they get thrown off a bike, that every single idea that they have is born out of solving a problem for themselves first, and then they hope that that problem gets solved for everybody else because they realize that it's a common problem. Yeah, it's spot on, Marcus. You know, people like to think that growing a small business is like you're going to be the next Facebook and everything is just going to be easy peasy and the company's going to take off. But the reality is it's a journey. There's going to be bumps in the road along the way, no matter how successful you are. And there's going to be periods of highs and there's going to be periods of tremendous lows. And if you don't have a stable foundation behind you for your reason for doing this, when the going gets tough, you'll walk away. If you just don't have that experience and that love and that passion, for that product or that business that you're running, your chances for success are truly hampered. I mean, you met a lot of entrepreneurs when you were sitting on the Goldman Sachs side of things who wanted to launch a business because they thought they could make $100 million. And if you really ask them about their ethos about the product or their reasoning behind starting the company, you probably could tell the difference between a pretender and, and the real deal between their passion around that project. Sure. Where's Verbalize it today? We sold the company. We grew it out of New York for four years. In fact, the morning I was to meet with the CEO that would ultimately acquire us was the morning I had my accident. Was that a pretty lucrative transaction for you? We ended up making a little bit of money, or gave our investors a little bit of a return. We were able to see the product and the business that we had built live on and to take part in an organization far bigger than ours and probably more adept at growing the company. You then have this bike accident. This morning, an accident seriously injured a man. A car knocked the cyclist off his bike and into the windshield. Take us through a really quick version of the bike accident and how quickly you got up to market with the product. Yes, yeah, so the bike accident happened in 2015. That morning, my wife was out of town. So I ended up crawling my way home, took the most painful shower of my life, and went straight up to the meeting with the CEO. And he just looked at me with a look of horror in his face, told me to go to the hospital, which I dutifully did. Ryan, I want to point something out for people before I forget it. And that is the level of commitment and dedication that you show as a business owner. You have this accident, you have a scheduled meeting, you should have been in the hospital. And this idea that you took a hot, painful shower with blood all over, with bruises all over, with broken bones all over, and you still kept your commitment to go see the CEO of a potentially important transaction. And I think a lot of entrepreneurs have to understand that being an entrepreneur is about a lot of sacrifice, regardless. I wanted just to point it out. I appreciate that. Yeah, you never know if that's the only meeting or the only opportunity you have, and I wanted to make sure that I was making the most of it. All right, so you get out of the hospital with a new mission. What was next? I really wanted to solve this problem that is distracted driving. And so fast forward to 2019, spent a ton of time doing research and customer development that got us to the point where it was time to launch that initial product. I want to point out one thing, every single idea, whether it's a translation app, whether it's a texting and driving app, you're trying to solve problems that make people better. You would almost be a self-help technology innovator, changing people's lives forever. And so if you look at all these seeds that you've laid, when the time is right, something will come back to you. I love the feeling, the sensation of seeing others enjoy something. My dad is a serial entrepreneur, and I grew up in an environment watching him. He treated all of his employees, several hundred of them in fact, as extended members of our family. 
and it wasn't uncommon to see him buying everyone Thanksgiving turkeys who couldn't afford a Thanksgiving turkey, providing resources and advice and expertise to those who needed it. And I was always raised in that environment where I saw the impact that that generosity, be it financial or be it you know a word of support or encouragement, changed their lives. So as we start saying goodbye to summer camp and beach vacations, we have a whole host of classic fall activities to get ready for. And in the colder weather, no gathering is complete without a nice fire to huddle around. And Solo Stove products can help add that little extra magic to your fall memories. Their stainless steel stoves and fireplaces are super easy to light, easy to clean, and make for more efficient fires. I think the best part is that they're virtually smoke free. They take away all the mess so you can focus on the good parts. I personally love my Ranger Fire Pit because it's the most portable. You can take it anywhere on the road. So it's really convenient for someone like me who loves RV traveling and camping. Get the perfect fire pit for those fall nights and make your backyard a destination with a spectacular fire pit from Solo Stove. Shop the fall event now and get an extra $10 off when you use promo code MARCUS at checkout. They're so confident you'll love it. They offer a lifetime warranty and a 30-day free return policy. Just go to solostove.com. And remember, you get $10 off when you use promo code MARCUS. Sometimes slow is exactly how we want things to be, like life on vacation. But what you don't want to be slow is your business's financial software. So if you're getting tired of delays, difficulties, and outdated manual processes holding you back, now is the time to make the switch to NetSuite by Oracle. It's ranked the number one financial system because NetSuite gives you increased visibility and control of your financials, inventory, HR, e-commerce, and more. It's everything you need to grow all in one place. With NetSuite, you can automate your processes and close your books in no time, no matter how big your business grows. Failing to switch to NetSuite will leave you stuck scrambling for the numbers you need while your competitors sprint ahead. And right now, special financing is back. NetSuite is offering a -a one-of-a-kind financing program only for those ready to switch today. Head to netsuite.com slash Marcus right now. Get special financing at netsuite.com slash Marcus. My next guest, who is a surprise guest and one that I have a ton of admiration for. I mean, you want to talk about having pedigree. This is it. Graduated from Harvard, also went to the University of Pennsylvania School of Medicine, Wharton Business School. He has received over 10 Emmy Awards, in addition to belonging to every major professional society for heart surgeons. This gentleman has been named among Time Magazine's 100 Most Influential People, Forbes' Most Influential Celebrities, Esquire's Most Influential People of the 21st Century. I can't even tell you how excited I am, but I want to bring on today's guest, host of the Dr. Oz Show, the very, very popular Dr. Oz. How are you, sir? Doing well. I'm just trying to keep up with you. That's my main goal in life. No, 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 no. This isn't fair. This isn't fair. What we need to keep up with is Ryan. Dr. Oz, thank you for coming on. I wanted you to meet Ryan Frankel, also a UPenn Wharton grad. Ryan, want to give Dr. Oz a quick 30-second summary on your business? Sure, Dr. Oz. I'm the founder of a company called This App Saves Lives that rewards drivers who choose not to engage in distracted driving. And those rewards points are redeemable for all of these amazing incentives sponsored by our community of merchant partners. Dr. I want to get into the human psychology of why we violate something that has so much common sense. And is this a real problem in America? You know, it's all about dopamine. Dopamine is the central addictive hormone of the brain. It makes us feel great. It's the exhilaration we feel when we're being intimate with others. And we do many things for that reason. But unfortunately, when we get pinged, especially when it's digitally done, it can stimulate us in ways that keep pulling us back more and more. Whatever is being texted to you brings you to something that you might want. So now all of a sudden your brain is reacting, dopamine is surging, and the reptilian part of your brain starts to kick in the gear. Remember, there's two fundamental parts of the brain. The decision-making part of the brain is very well adapted by the time we're 25 years of age to make decisions. But the reptilian part of the brain, which is the dominant decision-making part of the brain when we're teenagers, which is why we do things when we're teenagers that aren't always wise. That's why they send young people off to do you know, things that go to war. 
because they won't think twice about it, where by the time you're 30, you'd never go into those battles. In the case of a cell phone, a dopamine surge happens, you cannot put down that phone, even if you're risking your life. And that's why I think your approach, Ryan, is so wise, because when you chastise people, like, don't eat that bad food, it doesn't work. Quite the opposite, reminds them to eat that food that's not healthy for them. In listening to you, it sounds like it's an addictive behavior, just like eating candy or biting your nails or doing something else. Do you see texting as an addictive behavior? Of course. The habits that we develop, if they're acceptable socially, like work. Workaholism is an addiction, but it's socially accepted, so people look the other way. For much of the history of medicine, taking narcotics was actually an acceptable vice. You know, you do drugs, it'll get you through a very difficult day, you get up the next morning and go to work. You could do it. Alcoholism, socially acceptable if you don't hurt other people. At least it used to be. Texting, when done in the right setting, is perfectly fine with the wrong setting. It's not okay, and that's really difficult because those kinds of, of behaviors, which are sometimes okay, sometimes not, are incongruent for the brain. Where cigarette smoking, it's always bad for you. There's no time when it's good for you. Eating, sometimes it's good for you when it's done appropriately, sometimes it's not. That's why obesity is the single biggest scourge we have in this country. I like your explanation because I get a lot out of my phone because that's how I communicate. And I have a hard time delineating between when it's okay to do it and when it's not because I'm so hooked to it. Let's talk a little bit about the reward system, Ryan, and how it works. So the rewards themselves are sponsored by all of these merchant partners. They are the backbone of our business model. So if you think about an example of Ryan redeeming his safe driving points for a free milkshake at Shake Shack, chances are I'm going to walk into Shake Shack and I'm going to buy myself a burger and fries while I'm there. And so Shake Shack has just acquired a new customer in a very unique and innovative way. But they've also enabled themselves to go out there in the communities in which they operate and say, we care about our customers. I love the positive rewards concept. And Ryan's worked out a model where companies benefit for being part of a good cause. So I think it fits a lot of the requirements of digital businesses these days. And so when they look at how do I get new people into my store, they can stand on a street corner, they can buy an ad in a magazine, they can do a digital ad, or they can partner with a responsible technology company that also gives them the increased revenue that they're looking for. And this seems like nothing more than a cost of acquisition of a new customer. And a milkshake or whatever Urban Outfitters has, a t-shirt or whatever it may be, is all they're essentially doing is luring you through responsible marketing. Why wouldn't every company in America try to find new customers this way? That's our goal is to develop that kind of awareness amongst the merchants out there, that this is a profitable way for growing your business. This is a better ROI on your advertising dollars. And it's a way where you can give back to the world. So it's free to the individual, but the company's paying. It's good PR, so it's a good investment. And how do you monetize it? Because they're providing a free product. Do they also give you ad fees as well on top of it? We charge the merchants a recurring fee for us hosting those rewards on our platform. So if I wanted to add Camping World to it, which is my business, you could win points to get an RV or outdoor equipment or fishing equipment. How would that process work? Take us through that. It's a five minute setup process where brands come to us or we approach a brand. We ask them that they provide a unique perk or incentive, not something that you're gonna find elsewhere. We host those on our platform such that we create a merchant profile. We host those rewards. We give your company tagline, your website, everything a customer would wanna know about your brand. And then every time they go into that reward portal, they see your reward and they see your incentive. We offer all of our merchants three free months. We say, let us prove to you that this is an effective way of driving traffic in your direction. After those three months, we show them all of the metrics that we track on our end that says in the month of August, 50,000 redemptions took place at Shake Shack. Therefore, when we go to charge Shake Shack a certain amount per month, they're able to justify that cost because they're seeing the traffic. As you think about growing the company, how do you find adopters to download the app? We started out getting involved in high schools and colleges who unfortunately the students represent a disproportionate percentage of distracted driving related fatalities. And then from there, we've grown into corporate partnerships, even companies with drivers on the road as a core part of their business, automotive insurance companies. Distracted driving is pervading all aspects of life. And there's a number of different ways in which you can plug in to expand your reach. Doctor, can you talk a little bit about the reward system and how do we play with the psychology of people's brains on this one? As we get better with identifying exactly what you really want, 
will be able to give rewards that suit them better, make it more customized. For example, I wouldn't personally be all that attracted to go into a restaurant for a snack, but there are other things you could give me. Access to podcasts, books, streaming opportunities, access to unique content. So you can only get access to LeBron James showing you how to hit a foul shot if you actually participate in this program. And then it becomes an obligation. You have to get the app, even if you don't ever text in your car. And then you never know because when you're in the car, the person next to you might've been a texture and they learn about it from you. So it becomes more viral. And those kinds of assets are pretty effective. And I suspect that's on Ryan's game plan. And any time that there's a technology platform that allows an individual to feel like it's personalized for them, it's a win-win. Social media is so important for promoting your business or podcast for that matter. You want it to reflect your brand and your personality. You want it to draw people in. Canva Pro can help you do just that and design anything just the way you want. Canva Pro is the design platform that enables anyone of any skill level to create and share content in a fun, efficient way. You can choose from an impressive library of templates and then customize them to your look with user-friendly drag-and-drop features. Tons of fun images, and videos, so everything you need is accessible within one site while you're working. My favorite feature is the Content Planner, and Canva Pro lets you design, edit, and schedule your posts all in one place. Design like a pro with Canva Pro. Right now, you can get a free 45-day extended trial when you use my promo code. Just go to canva.me slash Marcus to get your free 45-day extended trial. That's C-A-N-V-A dot M-E slash Marcus. Canva dot me slash Marcus. Ryan, I'd like to have a little business proposal with you. So my primary line of work, as I said earlier, is Camping World. And there's 10 million RVers in America traveling this great country. And unfortunately, there are RVers that probably text and drive at the same time. And if there's a big motorhome coming at you, it's a problem if they're texting and driving. So number one, I'd like to connect with you after to have Camping World be a supporter and a sponsor of products. Number two, I'd like to figure out how to really educate our 5 million customers, how they can download the app and how it matters to them. Because what you're doing for me is making the road safer. It's making things less intimidating. It's making insurance rates cheaper. But I want to thank you for being a pioneer and getting us to think not only about our own safety, but about other people's safety. And lastly, and maybe most importantly, I am a fan of you because you're taking chances and opening businesses and starting ideas for somebody else's benefit first and your benefit second. And that truly is the definition of a conscious capitalist. And I give you a lot of credit for that. So thank you so much for coming on. Thank you for having me, Marcus. This was really a pleasure. And kudos to you with your app. Thanks. Take care. All right, Dr. Oz, are you ready for your fast five questions? Of course. I know you're a healthy guy, but what is your go-to cheat food? Chocolate-covered nuts. I can't say no to that combination of sweet and salty. I only have them once a week because if I had them more often, I wouldn't be able to stop myself. I love them too. I actually eat them every night. All right, let's move on to the next one. As a heart surgeon, what is your most memorable moment? My most memorable moment was my first solo heart surgery. Remember the heart looked like a snake, a python, curling out of the chest of the patient, ready to strike me. And I had to coax it and cajole it and get it to calmly cooperate with me, which I just was intimidated by. And then towards the end of the operation, it actually stopped for reasons I couldn't understand. And I managed to start it back up again, but it, it created a lot, a lot of confidence issues. But over time, I began to realize that it was the dance that you do when you keep the heart, our most poetic organ, alive. Wow. Okay, next one. If you hadn't been a doctor, what do you think you would have done? I wanted to be a professional athlete. I loved sports. I loved the fact that you could see your results almost immediately, which is true for heart surgery as well. So the closest thing to being a big-time athlete was to be a heart surgeon. So that's where I went. Are you ready for this one? What is your favorite character in The Wizard of Oz? It's the Scarecrow, because he actually had a brain. Oh, I'm a failure because I haven't got a brain. Why, if I had a brain, I could... I could while away the hours. He didn't realize he had all those resources until he tapped into them. I like that. Okay, last question. What do your grandchildren call you? My four grandchildren call me Ranka. <laughs> Ranka, I love that. I think it was an effort by the first 
child to call me grandpa, but I ended up with Runka, and I'll take it. And for all the grandparents out there, you don't get to choose your name, but you love whatever you do get. That is so true. Dr. Oz, thank you so much for coming on. I learned a ton. Well, of course. All right, brother, be good. Look, I think when you meet entrepreneurs like Ryan, I know for me, it gives me excitement to know that there's people that have purpose behind their capitalism. I'm a capitalist. I like making money. I like growing things and doing well with them. But I also think it's important to do right by people. And I think that Ryan is actually a good role model for all of us, including me, that it's okay to start a business with the end user's benefit in mind first and the money second. And I know that there's this old adage that there's an app for everything. In this particular case, this app saves lives. Thanks for joining me. This is 100%. This podcast is hosted and executive produced by me, Marcus Limonis. It's executive produced by Nancy Glass and James Balash. Produced by Joanne Cosro and Andrea D'Ambrosio. Other members of the production team include Andrea Gunning, Ben Fetterman, Lindsay Livingston, Carrie Hartman, Elena Karmazin, Thomas McClellan, Madeline Cole, Samantha Jacobson, and Brittany Vuzo. Edited by Matt Del Vecchio and Blake Maples. And the sound mixing is done by Dave Saya. A special shout out to Gotham Studios in New York City, Elliot Lanham at Hidden City Studios, BAM Studios in Chicago, and MIBE Music. 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 Music.